Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Today, we're firing up with some brand new Halo Infinite news from Halo Waypoint. This is an interview with multiple different developers at 343, led by Joseph Staten, and the news article is called Inside Infinite for December 2020. There is a ton of new information here. Mostly, I would say it's just news that's sort of calming everyone down, reassuring everybody that things are gonna be okay, but I'm gonna break it down as much as possible, and I've really just highlighted what I think is the most key information. But first, we're going to look at all all of the new images. We've got two images here of sort of biomes slash Halo Infinite maps. This first one looks like a Halo Infinite multiplayer map. It's got some kind of fantastic generator going on at the bottom there in a facility called Axis. Maybe the Axis compound is some kind of militia hideout. Maybe it's a research facility on the Halo ring. I mean, maybe it's where we find all of these new weapons. One of the things I really hope for Halo Infinite is that they explain where all these new weapons have come from. You know, in Halo 4, you just wake up and there's a sticky detonator next to you. It doesn't really make sense to me. So I really hope they show that maybe all of these are militia weapons, maybe insurgency weapons, or maybe they come from this facility axis. I do love that generator down there, and it also seems like there's some kind of armor pickup at the bottom there. Maybe it's a pretty small map, maybe 4v4. I'm very excited to see how that develops. There's another screenshot from another area of Axis, maybe showing the different layers of this map. Hopefully they utilize things like the grappling hook, extra mobility, the ways you can traverse the environment. And then we've also got this gorgeous post. Maybe this is some kind of banished camp leading into what they talk about later on in the article, where you can see a little foreigner structure. This is quite akin to a piece of the foreigner structure that we got in the Halo installation ring from Mega Constructs, and it's also got that kind of Minecraft environment. I love these sort of basalt columns. They're straight out of like Giant's Causeway, and then we jump onto these two weapons. We have got an image of the M41 Sputniker rocket launcher. It looks straight out of Halo 3. I'm in love with it. It's definitely old era. And so is this sniper rifle, the S7 Sniper. This is sort of a mix mash of like, it kind of looks like Halo 2 anniversary. And they actually talk later on in this article how they merged the old art styles of the anniversary games with new. And then we also get a surprising amount of pictures to do with the new armor coatings and the new armors themselves. The first one in the article is from the new Trailblazer Spartan, which we've seen in promotional Megablocks material earlier, and this has the Scorpion Punch armor coating. Now, this is exactly why I was kind of on board with armor coating. I know the internet is very against it, and I am particularly against it if it just means charging you extra money for your favorite colors, but if you can have armor coatings that mean you have different colored arms or different colored torso pieces, I mean, that's a fantastic idea. We did see that in one of the images for the new Mega Block Spartan Mark 7, also in Funko Pop, where he had a red arm, so I'm definitely excited to see how that is implemented. And then we've got the Mark 7, looking gorgeous with that assault rifle, oh my goodness. I'm very excited about Spartan Mark 7, I've collected a lot of the Mega Constructs figures so far, and the way that he's got his assault rifle perfectly matching his armor gets me very hyped. This is the Watchdog armor coating, and it looks exceptional. Moving on to a few new armors, some of these are not actually named. We've got this one with the splinter desert armor coating. It looks like it's got a fantastic leg accessory there. Like an ammunition and grenade belt and that gorgeous green metallic visor with the bulldog shotgun. That looks epic. And then we've got my boy George. Grenadier armor looking fire. Like such a good looking armor. Noble defender armor coating. Noble defender armor coating. Oh, I, I will think it's a terrible shame if I have to buy... George's armor coating, but we'll just have to see how that develops. And then the last one for today, this gorgeous watchdog armor coating. Again, you can see how like the watchdog is implemented into two different armors. And this one also has a matching battle rifle that looks beautiful. I'm guessing that the armor coatings will be sold separately for Spartans and weapons, but we'll just have to see. I really hope it doesn't cost that much money. And you can see that both of the different watchdog armor coatings have different colored visors, a bronze and a red. So they are all the images that we've got today. And now I'm just gonna 
going to run down what I think is the most important information from the update. I've highlighted all the key points and then I'll also open it up for some more discussion. And I would love you guys to let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. All right, so the article is introduced by Joseph Staten. He says, hey everyone, I was part of the Bungie team who made Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, 3, ODST and Reach. I spent the last four months immersing myself back into the Halo universe and it's my honor as creative director to help our team ship Halo Infinite in fall 2021. I joined 343i right as the team was wrestling with feedback from the July campaign demo. We needed more time to do things right because Halo Infinite in the fall of 2021 is just the beginning of the adventure. And yes, he just casually confirms the release date of Halo Infinite. I mean, certainly when I'm looking at Cyberpunk 2077, I wouldn't really <laughs> be that invested in exactly when it's coming out, but we'll see. So he talks about the arts and graphics update first. In the months since our campaign demo, the team has been heads down working on everything. We know the community has been eager to hear about and see the improvements and progress the team has made since July. Yes, we definitely have. And then he brings in a load of different creative directors. I won't name them all, but they're all in the blog post if you want to check that out. They're all talking about the game, saying the primary goal for the campaign demo in July was showing Halo Infinite's gameplay for the first time. While that aspect generally landed as we wanted, the reality is that the art and visuals weren't at the bar we hold for Halo. It's nice to see them acknowledging all these problems, you know. Most of the feedback we heard from the community aligned with our own views and work we were already committed to doing around things like indirect lighting, material resources, foliage and tree rendering, clouds, level of detail transitions, you know, all this general stuff. They're just talking about how they need to polish the game. The main thing they point out is dynamic time of day, global illumination. I really hope that there's a day-to-day -day cycle in Halo Infinite. I would love all different weather conditions. That's something that Halo's really been missing. Then visual fidelity is a very important goal for Halo Infinite and the graphics and art teams have been continually aspiring and working closely with each other to create the best looking Halo game ever. And then they talk about combining the cleaner and simpler forms of classic games like Halo 1 and 2 with the next gen requirements and expectations of Halo Infinite. Merging both was definitely a challenge, but we managed to find a balance of modernized visuals with combined classic aesthetics that will definitely speak to all, and we couldn't be more proud of this. It, it's, it's very nice to hear. Like, it is all very nice to hear. They clearly, like, they have their head screwed on the right direction, you know? They really have a vision for Halo Infinite, which I'm so excited to see them bring to life. Firstly, there's been a lot of work done retuning our dynamic lighting values to add more punch and contrast to the image. These included adjustments to our sun intensity, fog atmosphere, and the addition of color grading, which did not make it into the July campaign demo. We've improved some of our materials to get more spectacular response, more wear and tear on weapons and vehicles, more fidelity in our characters, and more macro breakup on large surfaces like rocks, terrain, and the hex walls. This all sounds great, you know? <laughs> it's all... You know, it's all just sort of generally keeping the cogs turning. It's what you want to hear, but nothing really, nothing really specific. But then it goes on to Craig the Brute, our Lord and Savior. While we in the internet have come to love dear Craig, we know he wasn't his best self back in July. What are you talking about? He was great. Firstly, I can confirm that the facial animations on NPCs were not fully implemented into that build, which resulted in Craig's incredibly deadpan, lifeless look. Oh no, you, you're talking bad on my Craig. Poor old Craig was never intended to be seen in that condition, which is not something that that was evident during the gameplay. It was only later in the close-up freeze frame of that one bad moment where it came to light and the legend of Craig was born. There's been further work done on the material fidelity and more variety added for brute faces. We're also working to add some hairdos and beards, which was not something we had gotten to in July. I, you know, it's it's good. I, I, I hope they keep him in in some way. I really hope there's some kind of memorial. So whilst we've come to love our dear old Craig, he's certainly undergoing a significant makeover. Probably for the best. They talk a lot next about the difficulties between working with both open and closed environments. You know, interior corridors versus massive open worlds. And they do highlight some kind of seamless time of day in their environments, which I am very excited about. And then they mention the juxtaposition, having a nice balance and variety to the experience of both open and closed environments. They say we've made significant improvements on our foliage, trees and grass, both in terms of rendering, fidelity, and how we maintain that over distance. But this is another area that's still being worked on, and we're excited to show you as soon as we're able to bring things together and showcase the work in the best light. And that does, you know, ring home to me about, I I've been mad that they haven't been sharing more. And I've thought that like, if Halo Infinite was meant to come out this month, at least this month if you're delaying it, show us more gameplay. But I kind of respect that if it's still not in the best light to 
show it, maybe they're not going to. Making a game from hundreds of at-home desks is clearly something that initially reduced our ability to merge all game assets into a single successive vision. It was without a doubt the biggest challenge we have faced this year, but with time, dedication and perseverance, we are making it work. It is something that you've got to respect, like working from home, not being able to walk between work floors and talk these things through in person must be terribly difficult. And then when it comes to live and customization, they make some very important points. Number one, healthy engagement is paramount. We want everyone to play the game in a healthy manner that they enjoy. We're not trying to build a grind machine that burns everyone out in an attempt to get more game time from them. Halo Infinite needs to be a place where we all look forward to spending time. Preach. That's amazing. Two, we maintain a player first focus. Think of all the games we've all played that have random rewards. Ask people to play a way they hate just for a new shiny or weaponized FOMO against the player. You're talking about Halo 5 Guardians, guys. I mean, you're not exactly talking like Halo's been the forefront of not having these things. Like, Halo 5 Guardians was literally grind, grind, grind on those gold packs and you might get the thing you want. So they talk about that further on. If someone invests their time and money into a game, they should understand what they're getting from it and that it will be worth that investment. And we're not selling power or giving an unfair advantage in game via any route. Number four, we want to bring the best set of cosmetic only rewards to Halo. We want great looking assets and ways to show that Spartan off. We want players to get close to their Spartan and spend time swapping parts and pieces. It has been said before and it's important to restate, no loot boxes, no randomness in rewards. Thank the Lord. And number five, allow player expression. We want everyone to build their dream Spartan. We want to make sure that Halo Infinite's players will be able to get their old favorites as well as find new favorites at launch and as we expand over the months post launch. Much like MCC, I want to bring everything to Infinite eventually. Ugh, that's so good. I mean, you did bring everything to MCC. MCC is one of the greatest redemption stories ever made. It's so good. The, the game is so all encompassing now. So it's amazing to sound like they will bring everything to Halo Infinite. Yes, being free to play does mean that there will be some premium cosmetics, but players will still obtain tons of customization content through things like playing campaign, challenges, skills, special events, legacy rewards, the progress system, and more. Players that play for free will be able to unlock items across a multitude of different customization types to allow them to represent themselves in game. I wonder whose choice it was to bring Halo into free to play. It's not something that I'm totally against, but I do want all the players that are playing Halo to be playing it for the right reason. But then again, the more players that join Halo, the better it is for the community. We got a couple more things to touch on today, folks. Halo Reach customization. I've been waiting to hear some news about this for a long time. So first of all, the geo that could be customized in Halo Reach was helmet, helmet attachment, chest gear, shoulder pads, knee guards, wrist gear, and utility, as well as visor color. They will all be back and we will go further. That's so good. Especially things like, wow, knee guards and wrist gear. We might have even potentially seen a knee guard in that promotional picture. Likewise, players have seen coatings for weapons and vehicles. They know about that, but that's not all they'll be able to customize either. Ooh. And then there's things that don't fall into those three areas that players will be able to get via engagement and premium paths too. To round up a little, no loot boxes, no randomness or items that influence the sandbox and gameplay. Bravo. Bravo. And we're finishing off today with the road ahead. I'm fortunate to have worked with incredibly talented teams my entire career. The Infinite team is no exception. Folks here don't just understand Halo, they love the core gameplay and characters and community. Everything that makes Halo, Halo, just as much as I do. And like me, they also have a deep responsibility to serve. We aren't making this game for us, we're making it for you. Starting with this update, we're going to be sharing more about what we're doing and most importantly, why we're doing it. My first week on the job, I played the entire infinite campaign twice. I was, in a word, stunned, in the best possible way, by what the team had done. Infinite is by far the most expansive and vertical Halo world ever. Why did the team do this? Because they understand that wonder and freedom a key to the Halo experience. I could feel the classic Halo 30 seconds of fun beating at the heart of Infinite's world, but I had never felt more powerful, more mobile, more in command of a rich set of tactical choices. This was the Halo we imagined back in 2000, finally come to life after 20 years of technical and creative innovation. Do I explore off the Golden Path? Assault that banished war base guarding the Valley Pass? Follow a flight of foreigner sentinels into that unexpected cavern? 
rescue a squad of marines dug in and desperate halfway up that mountain? Or do I keep pulling the mainland story thread that feels epic and intimate at the exact same time? Truly, Halo Infinite is a world in which I love spending time and that I'm thrilled to return to, both as a designer and a player. That quote about how you can explore the Halo world gave me chills almost. I mean, that's amazing. All these different path options of how you can explore the campaign, how the campaign can just feel like an open world shooter. Guys, I know the road to Halo Infinite is rocky and everybody's faith has been shook from that campaign gameplay being a little off par and also the game being delayed, but you have to have faith in 343. We owe them that much to at least let them release Halo Infinite and give it their best shot. I'll always defend, Halo 4 campaign was solid, Halo 5 multiplayer was a lot of fun, Halo 2 anniversary was amazing. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt, I hope you guys enjoyed today and please do let me know in the comments exactly what you enjoyed and what you're looking forward to in Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is signing off.